Hey friends, welcome back to She's At It Again. My name's Tanya, and today's recipe is spaghetti and meatballs with gravy. And before you turn the video off like you're scared of what that means, I'm not gonna be putting white gravy or brown gravy over spaghetti and meatballs. This is actually, I'm just going by what I'm told. I'm not Italian, but from what I understand, this is what Italians call spaghetti and meatballs. They call the sauce over it gravy. So we're just gonna go with that. And I discovered this recipe a few years ago. I went to an elementary school and taught kids how to make it. They had so much fun making spaghetti. I think we made homemade pasta that day maybe, or maybe homemade French bread or something. But anyway, made this spaghetti to go with it and they just thought it was pretty cool. I don't think people a lot nowadays eat spaghetti and meatballs. It's just spaghetti. We kind of got out of the meatball phase, but these are really good. It's such simple ingredients. You would look at the list of ingredients and go, "What? why would that be better than any other spaghetti? I mean, I like a lot of all these other ingredients too, like peppers and onions and blah, 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 and all this. Well, this doesn't have any of that in it. It's just such simple ingredients, but they're so beautiful together. They really do taste very, very good. So I don't know if I'm gonna have time to make homemade pasta that goes with it although that is a very it's it's a messy process but it's not hard it's not a lot of hard ingredients it's not um it's not rocket science you can't really mess it up but it's just a matter of timing because this needs to probably sit in the refrigerator for a couple of days the sauce does to get the sauce kind of incorporated in the meatballs but the meatballs have breadcrumbs in them. So what I'm going to start out is I'm going to show you my rolls left over from this past Sunday. I took and toasted some of those and we're going to make breadcrumbs out of those. So that's the start to these. So anyway, it's kind of an interesting recipe. I hope you stay tuned. I hope you enjoy it. And as always, thank you for watching. Okay, so we have our food processor out. And... I have my lid locked. These are the rolls that I just cut into thirds. I think I have uh, three rolls here. We're going to put these in our food processor. And they're pretty crispy. I just put them in about a 300 degree toaster oven and set it on a couple of cycles of about 15 minutes and let them dry out. I flipped them over, toasted them again, so they're pretty dry. I've had them in my regular wall oven overnight, so we'll see if they work. This recipe calls for, I believe, a cup of breadcrumbs so if you have panko crumbs, that's fine. If you have breadcrumbs and it's plain breadcrumbs, not the Italian breadcrumbs, not anything with seasoning in them. So just regular breadcrumbs. If you have bread that's in the freezer that you saved because you were gonna use it for something else, then by all means, bring it out. But it's gonna be in the meat. So you don't have to worry about, oh, it's not a, it's not a soft bread or it's not a crunchy bread or whatever. It's really not going to matter a whole lot, but you do want most of the moisture gone out of it. You could actually just use a rolling pin and put these in a plastic zip top bag and do the same thing, but these are gonna be super fine. Let me just say, this is like powder in here. So 
sometimes you just got to crunch up the big pieces with your hands. I have to be super careful here because there's nothing, unless it's a mandolin, there's not many things sharper than the blades of a food processor, particularly this one. Um, we had a house fire, I believe I might have mentioned that before, we had a house fire about 17 years ago and my food processor, of course, burned in the house fire as most of the things in my kitchen did, but that meant I got to go get all new appliances. And when I did, I got to do research actually this time instead of it being a gift or something I didn't really pick out or just something I bought because that's what I could afford at the time. I got to go pick out nice appliances, what I wanted. So this is a Cuisinart 14 cup. And at the time, I don't know if they make a larger one now, but this was the largest one available. And I, not one day have I ever regretted buying the largest one I could. So we'll see if this makes up a cup. If not, we'll have to chop up some more breadcrumbs. Okay, I'm hoping once when I get the oil poured into this pan that it will not have that glare on it. I realize there's a shiny spot on there. So we're going to start out making our gravy, which is basically our tomato sauce for our spaghetti with meatballs and gravy. We're going to put about three tablespoons. One, two, three. As you can tell, I'm a very, very accurate measurer. Just kidding, I'm really not. Uh, that much olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. And this is the kind I'm using if you have any questions about it. To that, we're going to add about three cloves of freshly minced garlic. Now, I buy the convenience jar, if you'll call it that. I buy this at my local big store. So I'm going to put about what looks like three cloves of garlic in there. And we are very, very fond of garlic, so if I get too much, I'm sure nobody's going to be upset about it. Some of you might be wondering, what determines what videos come out? What's the plan behind it? Well, there is no plan. Whatever my husband says, you know what would be good? That's usually what I wind up making. So there's your answer for that. And what I'm trying to do right now is just figure out about when the video is going to come out, which I am not very good at that, obviously, because I'm not the one who edits them. I just keep cooking and sometimes we're two months ahead, sometimes we're a month and a half out, sometimes we're a month out. So I'm trying to figure out what's going to be appropriate for that type of weather. So in other words, I wouldn't make chicken and dressing or dumplings in July because that's not when people want to have that and certainly don't want to heat up your kitchen cooking that in July. So I'm trying to make weather appropriate meals for the videos to come out. And I realize you can access them whenever you want, but fact stands, I'm just trying to figure out what's best for that time of year. So we want our heat to be over medium low. You don't want to have this too hot because you don't want to burn your garlic. If garlic's going to have anything wrong with it, it's going to be when you overcook it and it just tastes singed. So you don't want to do that. Now to that, we're going to be adding about 45 ounces all combined of crushed canned tomatoes. So easy enough, you don't even have to go find fresh tomatoes. And these are fabulous because they're fire roasted and I'm all about the fire roasted. I think I've told you that before in videos, I can't say that enough. There's such a huge difference in the flavor of fire roasted as opposed to just regular tomatoes. Now regular tomatoes are great, I, I love me some tomatoes in just about any form, but the fire roasted just adds so much flavor to it. It's quite phenomenal. So 45 ounces of tomatoes combined. So you can use three small cans or a big can on a small can or however you want to mix and match there, whatever you have. Just try to get it about that amount.
our mixture here once we get everything added in there is going to cook low and slow and then we're going to be making our meatballs to go in it we'll cook those in a skillet first and then we'll add those to the tomato sauce or the tomato gravy here and let them cook low and slow in that okay don't want to get these too hot so we're going to add our tomatoes to it now be careful it doesn't splash on you because you do have hot oil in there Don't throw that can out quite yet. I'm going to show you what to do with that. To this, we're also going to add about a teaspoon of dried basil. Now, my basil is in this, in my spice jar, but this is basil that I grew last year in my little cow tubs and flower pots in the backyard so i dehydrate it and you don't have to have a dehydrator to do that with you just leave it out on the counter as long as it's not too humid in your room where they're going to mildew or something which isn't typical for inside a house since your humidity levels should be lower in your house if your air conditioner is working properly then just let them sit out enough to where they just shrivel up and are ready to go in a jar. You don't want any humidity or any moisture left in them when you put them in the jar. They will have a fungusy growth on them. But fresh basil is phenomenal. But dehydrated or dried basil is certainly one of the better fragrances too. It just smells really nice. I have a stevia plant as well that I've had for, I don't know, probably six or seven, maybe eight years. And every winter it kind of doesn't really go dormant. It just looks like it's really sad. And I keep it in the sunroom and then in the spring I'll take it back outside and it is pr a prolific performer as far as putting on leaves and you can just pick those off and chew on them it is like eating it's like eating um, a combination between a piece of paper and and candy it's just so incredibly sweet but I also pick those leaves off and dehydrate them I have a huge jar of um, stevia well not a huge jar I have a huge jar of mint that I have dehydrated in my pantry, but I have a, a pretty big jar of stevia leaves that we can crush up and put in desserts of any kind to make them a little sweeter. Okay, I think that's about a teaspoon of dried basil. And then I'm gonna also add just a touch of honey to this. You knew that was coming. You can add sugar if you must, but I have rather add honey to it. I'm not going to use my raw honey because this is going to get cooked anyway and it would cook all the beneficial things out of it. But just about a teaspoon of honey. because we're going to be cooking this a while we don't want it to get too thick or scorch on the bottom so we're going to add some water to it we're going to add about 23 ounces so if you have 24 it's not going to be a deal breaker but here's what I'm doing see all the stuff that's left in the can after I pour the tomatoes out I'm going to pour a little bit of that water in there this is measured out at 23 ounces pour a little bit of that water in there Kind of swish it around and get the rest of that tomato mixture out of there so we can use every bit of it. We'll get our big can and do the same. And the life is not over for these cans because I'm now going to use these to put 
plants in out in my yard. <laughs> I'm forever telling my husband, don't throw your coffee cups away if you go get coffee somewhere, which he's a coffee drinker, I'm not. Um, I don't think I've ever hidden that fact before. But I tell him, if you're gonna spend that much money on coffee, at least bring me the cup, and it's normally these thicker, nicer paper cups. And he brings them to me and I put my plant starts in them when they get a little bit bigger than just using the little peat pods. Plus, I also have a source for Japanese maple seedlings. And I will take dirt, soil from my own yard to this place and go and get the seedlings and replace the soil that I've dug the hole from. And I, for some reason, am able to grow Japanese maples. And if you've ever priced Japanese maples in a store, in a garden center or nursery, you know that they are quite expensive to buy them there. But I'm just plucking these things out of the ground and getting them growing. So those cans, if I punch enough holes in the bottom of it, it has good drainage and they are just perfect for growing seedlings. So go figure. The things you learn when you get older, kind of fun. Okay, we're going to let this simmer for a while. In the meantime, we're going to make our meatballs. So I'm going to turn the camera off and we'll go over and get busy on that. Okay, getting started on our meatballs to go in our gravy. Let me grab a knife here. And we're going to cut our package of ground beef open. This is what I'm using. Hopefully you can see that. This is just the best way I've found to open these packages. It doesn't tend to leave as much in the package if I open it like that, but still some clings to the side. that we're going to add four eggs so they're such pretty eggs There's that chicken that lays that torpedo-shaped egg. I crack up every time I see that. I don't know which chicken it is at my friend's house, but that's the shape of egg they lay every single time. Looks like a bullet or something. And my friend can tell by the egg which chicken laid it. It's so funny. And she'll have to tell me their names, but I, I know. <laughs> I don't remember their names, but she does. <laughs> All right, to that we're also going to add about a teaspoon of dried, or if you have fresh parsley, it takes about a tablespoon of fresh parsley. And I have dried, so we're using a teaspoon. And we have doggies sneezing in the background, apparently. <laughs> Zoe always has to get in on the picture. Three cloves of fresh garlic minced, and you know I'm going to use this kind. A pinch of salt.
a cup of the breadcrumbs. Now these are those rolls that we put in the food processor earlier. And we need two tablespoons of grated Romano cheese. So uh, the story goes, when I found this recipe, I was actually watching someone make this on some show on TV years ago. And the lady was apparently very, very Italian. She was a beautiful, beautiful lady. And one of the people on this show asked her, <laughs> is it okay if we use Parmesan? And she snapped back, no, we do not use Parmesan in these meatballs. So I am never gonna use Parmesan in these meatballs. She was very emphatic about that. So we are using Romano. Calls for two tablespoons, so just rough estimate on that. I'd rather have too much than too little. And this cheese really does give it a good flavor. I will have to hand it to that lady. I don't know what Parmesan would do to it, but I'm too scared to try it now that she was so emphatic about it. I'm always going to use Romano in these. May just been because she was Italian. They're just emphatic about a lot of stuff. But she was cute. And I have two doggies staring at me from right beside my ankles. They know when I get out that grater or the zester and a package of cheese. That is their cue to come running, but I'm not giving them Romano cheese. I love this microplane zester because it's almost like grating a, uh, like a snow cone or something. It just grates it so fine. All right, we'll put that in there. Make sure I don't have any on the counter. I did clean the counter off real good before I actually started the video, so I know I'm not picking up any crumbs from anything else. All right, let's get this stirred up. Notice I took my rings off. I'm going to wind up getting my hands in this a lot, so I'm not a fan of getting meat stuck in underneath my rings. Wow, this smells really good. I forgot how good this smells. It's been a while since I've made this, but when he mentioned the other day something about having spaghetti and he he specified, you know, just plain spaghetti. This is plain spaghetti to him. He means not a spaghetti casserole and not a spaghetti with Italian sausage and not a spaghetti with peppers and onions and layered with other stuff or not <laughs> the stuff that I found recipes for and it always embellishes it with something, which I think is kind of fun but he just wanted plain spaghetti. So this is what he's referring to. Okay, save your cutting board if you've grated cheese on the cutting board and we're gonna put our meatballs off on that in just a minute. Kind of line them up because we wanna fry them and then put them in our gravy mixture. Let them cook real low and slow the rest of the way. And we're not going to go in and keep stirring this because then the meatballs will fall apart. You wouldn't have meatballs. You would just have meat sauce instead of meatballs and gravy. Now that is a pretty mixture, guys. Okay. 
I don't know about you, but when I cook, the things that come to mind are the people who have come into my home and eaten with us. And maybe it's what I'm cooking or maybe I'm just thinking about how much they would like what I'm cooking right now. But so many people come to mind when I think about people who have eaten with us and the conversations we've had over a dinner table. And for some reason, a living room just doesn't work as well as a dinner table when it comes to conducive conversation. And that's why cooking is such a passion because without the cooking, you don't have the eating around the table as much as you would at a restaurant or even in a living room. And the only thing that even compares to it is maybe sitting on a swing outside or just having people over, bringing their lawn chair and sitting in your yard. So that dining room table is kind of magical to us. Okay, we'll set that aside. That's pretty much stirred. And I'm going to see which of my, I'll let you see what this drawer looks like. It's kind of, it kind of looks like chaos, but it's really not as chaotic as it looks because I know where everything is. But these are all my scoops ranging from very small to uh, the largest one down here, medium ones, all kinds of stuff in here. So that's a fun drawer. I need to choose the size of my meatballs. And this is about the time I go, man, why don't I have that size? I just need to invent a size. It's always the in-between size of what I have that I'm needing. Okay, we'll put our cutting board back over here. We're gonna level this scoop off and then just kind of roll them the rest of the way. We'll roll them more when we start to put them in the skillet. I just wanna section them out right now. Meatballs could not get much easier than this. And if you buy pre-made meatballs, and I never have, but I can only assume they have a lot of ingredients on the label, listed on the label. So I'm, I'm not sure why, unless they're just listing off the ingredients of the breadcrumbs too, maybe. Maybe that takes up a lot, but these were simply dinner rolls that I made that were made with organic flour, honey, an egg, some milk, some oil, salt, yeast. So that's not a lot of ingredients, so I'm not sure what their list would contain, but if it contains more than just a few ingredients, it might be worth checking into making your own. As you can see, this is not hard. Now you could probably put these on a baking sheet and bake them off in the oven and they would, they would bake just fine. That way you don't have to keep flipping them over in the skillet. But I find it easy to make them in the skillet because I can make them in batches and then just transfer them over to the stock pot where I'm cooking the tomato gravy.
I think I'm going to just have enough room on here. They'll be a little cozy, but I'll get them all on there. We have 30 meatballs. And if you don't think knowing how many meatballs you have matters, just invite boys to your house, younger boys, and see if they know how to count because they'll argue they didn't get as many meatballs as the kids sitting next to them. But if you know how many meatballs you have, then you can say, well, if we have five people in here, then each of you can have this many meatballs, and you can divide it up evenly. All right, what we're gonna do next is uh, cook our meatballs in a skillet. So I'm gonna turn the camera off again and we'll get our skillet heated up. We're over at the stove top now and I have put a little bit of olive oil in my cast iron skillet. Gonna let it heat up just a bit. And this is simmering low and slow. You can see the bubbles kind of coming up slowly, but it's not just rolling and foaming up bad. I did turn the heat down on it and I've taken the lid off because we don't want it to just retain all that moisture if we don't have to. It's gonna soak up a lot of this flavor in these meatballs, but we'll put the lid on it once the meatballs go in and start cooking low and slow there. I have this on a larger burner over here. So this is completely uh, going to heat up all the way to each edge. All right, let's see how warm that is. Let's give these enough room in here to where if we need to flip them over, they won't be so crowded. There's not enough room to do that. I love how uniform they come out when you use that cookie dough scoop.
Okay, so we got about half of our meatballs in there. We got 15 in there and we had 30 all together. So that should work out nicely. We'll get them cooked in two batches. Okay, I have found that this is the easiest way to turn meatballs without getting them out of shape. These are just bamboo skewers. You could use chopsticks or just skinny sticks of any kind, I guess. don't have to worry about cooking these all the way through in a skillet. Just brown the outside of them because they're going to finish cooking in the tomato gravy. But you want to cook them enough to where they'll hold their shape, especially on the outside. That way they don't, again, fall apart. Okay, those are looking pretty cooked. Now you can pick these up like this and just drop them in there. Or you can pick them up with a spoon or spatula or something.
Just resist the urge to keep stirring this once you put the meatballs in. the other 15 in the skillet. You also want to make sure your burner isn't too high. I have my big burner here set on two and I realized that when I turn my big burner on two, it actually feels like it's cooking hotter than if it were a small burner. And it probably is, but you don't want to even turn it up to medium. These need to cook slow just to where they're browned and set on the outside. So resist the urge to overcook them. I can remember, I think I may have mentioned this before, when my Nana would cook sausage, she would have that little iron skillet just blazing hot and put that sausage in there. And in my eight-year-old mind, I remember looking at that skillet going, why does that need to be so hot? It just the science behind it. And I never argued with her because, you know, Nana knows everything. She seriously did. She was so wise. But this day, I refuse to turn that burner up high when I'm cooking anything. I'd rather start slow unless it's just something that's going to fall apart if it's not seared. But she wanted that sausage well done on the outside. I just want it done all the way through. I don't want it burned on the outside and raw on the inside. Okay, I'm going to take this over to the sink and get it ready to wash. With our sauce, once we get the meatballs into this gravy, we're going to allow them to simmer for about an hour. And I know that's a long time, but um, especially for the summertime if it's fighting your air conditioner. But if you have an outside heat source that you can cook these in a, a crock pot that comes up to simmer or some kind of cooker like that that just cooks slow and consistently, then that might be a good idea. But it's not... It's not hot yet here right now when I'm videoing this, so this is not an issue. But you want to keep it in the mixture for at least three hours. So what you want to do is simmer it for about an hour, turn the burner off, put the lid on it, and let it sit there for about two more hours. Then you can refrigerate it. And if you'll refrigerate it for at least another day or so, the flavors even get better. I can't explain that. There's probably a science to it I'm just not smart enough to know about. but. It really does improve the flavor when it sits a little longer. So all you have left after that is to make your pasta or cook your pasta. And ladle this over it. And of course, more Romano cheese for the top of it wouldn't be a bad idea either. Okay, I'm gonna start transferring these meatballs over to our gravy mixture. Okay, we'll slide this pan back off the burner so it can cool off. We'll wash those. 
and I'm going to put this lid over here, although I'm not going to put it on it right now. Again, I'm going to let this simmer for about, um, about an hour. So I know what time it is now, and I'll take it off in about an hour. So I'll turn that down as low as it can go. We'll simmer that, and then we'll come back, and I'll show you what it looks like when that's done. And hopefully, not making any promises here, but hopefully I will remember to um, video this as we serve it. So... Wish me luck, guys. You just, I know you want to see it when it's served. So, 